Hello, good morning and welcome to Health Business. My name is Oluwatoin Kolaole. Our mandate on this program is to give you health information that make you live a more healthier life. Top stories on health business this morning. UCH in Ibadan is 60, yes. 60 years of giving medical care to people and also Nigerian joined the rest of the world to commemorate this year's World Diabetes Day. All the reports will come your way shortly. The management of the prestigious University College Hospital, UCH Ibadan, your state, has declared that the hospital is capable of resolving the brain drain and medical tourism challenges plaguing the nation's health sector. The chief medical director of the institution, Professor Timitokwe Alonge, stated this while briefing health journalists on the week-long activities lined up for the 60th anniversary celebration of the institution. According to him, UCH has now become a stopgap between the private and general hospital in the country through intervention in the form of private suites for those who patronize the private health facilities. It was designed to be a 345 bedded hospital, but as I speak, it's a 1,000 bed hospital with an underground storage facility for water, an underground storage for uh, electrical connections for the entire hospital, the sewage system. And we have another village below the basement, a whole village uh, which spans almost one kilometer, where we have all the facilities of the hospital. And um, it's unique in the construct. And in 1954, the construction began. But well, by 1956, the carcass was completed. By 1957, the furnishing had been made ready. And I'm very glad to say that in 60 years, we have come around to evaluate what we are. What do we intend to do in the next 60 years? We tend to be a quaternary healthcare service provider, meaning that we want to go into a pediatric intensive care unit, we'll be established before the end of the year. We want to do what's called fetal surgery. We intend to send some of our young doctors to train where we can exteriorize a baby in the womb leaving the placenta connected to the mother, and if they have life-threatening congenital problems, we can operate on the babies and put them back in the uterus and stitch it up, and they will have normal safe delivery. The hospital management also staged a walk around the ancient city of Ibadan to commemorate its 60 years of impacting the city and Nigeria as a whole. <laughs> As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to commemorate this year's World Diabetes Day, experts say early diagnosis is key in the prevention of diabetes-related complications. During a sensitization work organized by Sanofi Pharmaceutical Company in Lagos, residents were advised to keep a healthy lifestyle. The work took off from the Sanofi head office in Alausa through the entire stretch of the busy Ikeja business district. World Diabetes Day is held November 14 of every year. The objective of commemorating this day is to address issues facing diabetes patients worldwide. The theme for the 2017 edition of the World Diabetes Day is Women and Diabetes, Our Rights to a Healthy Future. A 
Are you diabetic? Do you have a relation managing diabetes? Do you want to know more information on how to stay healthy as a diabetes patient? Well, this episode is specially designed for you as we have our experts to shed more light on the management of diabetes. I'm now being joined now by um, an endocrinologist, Dr. Ifedayo Odeniyi. You're welcome on Health Business. Thank you very much. So, uh, what exactly is diabetes and what are the causes? Um, diabetes is that medical condition where the blood glucose level is very, very high, more than what is expected in sufferers. And it is due to lack of insulin or insulin is present and is not present in adequate quantity or the insulin is present and it is not working very well, which we call insulin resistance. Okay, while growing up, um, diabetes used to be common among adults, but now we see more adolescents coming down with this disease. What, what, what is the reason for this? Okay, um, it is not a disease of adults alone. We have a type called type 1, which is common in children. And this type 1 is due to destruction of beta cell. This is the cell that produce insulin. So we have children with type 1. Their population is not as much as the adult with type 2. And that's why people think that it is only adults that have diabetes. We have it in children also, but their number is not as much as we have in a... But you agree with me that the ratio of um, adolescents having diabetes is now increasing. Why is this increasing? Yes, it is increasing in children. In fact, some children actually have type 2. They don't have type 1. And it's due to the lifestyle. Most children now are obese. And in major part of the world, we are battling with childhood obesity. And with obesity that is being fat, insulin does not work well. And when insulin doesn't work well, it can predispose the person to having diabetes. And that's why today we have quite a large number of our children who are obese. And as a consequence, we have some of them already coming down with diabetes. So are you now saying diabetes is hereditary? Well, it runs in family, okay? If a person has family history of diabetes, there is that possibility, or let me put it, there is the risk of offspring from that uh, family developing diabetes if environmental factors come into play. It is not compulsory that they will have diabetes, but they have a high tendency of having diabetes. All right. Now let's move on to the management of diabetes. After a patient has been diagnosed of diabetes, what is next? Okay, now, after making a diagnosis, then the treatment is in fold. We have the non-drug treatment and the drug treatment. Both of them are combined because you cannot do one in isolation of the other. The most important one is the non-drug treatment, and that is what we call the lifestyle modification. Okay. Now, lifestyle modification includes diet, and exercise, quit smoking, and stop alcohol. Now, diet is very, very important. It is a big pillar in the management of diabetes. In the past, and even in some areas, some people are still subjected to eating beans and unripe plantain. And this is quite depressing for the patient. The, there is no special diet for those who suffer diabetes. What is important is they can eat food that is available in their locality and is culturally acceptable to them. But it must be in small 
quantity. Now, when we say small quantity, scientifically, we are talking about the calorie that is inside what they eat. And that is the most important. Of course, we don't advise them to think all these uh, carbonated drinks. We don't encourage our traditional meal. We are encouraged to take a typical meal for a person with diabetes must have carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And in that particular meal, it is more of carbohydrates compared to the other two components of food. And they must have what we call fiber, which is in form of vegetable. And that is the way the diet is. Then, when the diet, of course, the diet is also done in conjunction with a dietitian. Because we write a prescription. When you are prescribing diet, it's like prescribing drug. You prescribe in terms of calorie and you send to the dietitian who actually work out what quantity of eba or amala or fufu or whatever it translates to for the patient. Now, when we've taken care of diet and the patient understand how to adjust this quantity, exercise also comes into play. And exercise that is recommended is 150 minutes of exercise per week. And that comes down to about 30 minutes every day. Now, what kind of exercise are we talking about? We're talking about brisk walking, jogging, swimming, cycling, depending on what the patient can do. However, before any patient embark on exercise, the patient must be certified fit to be able to do those exercises. Only when we've been able to do that, patient can exercise. Then patient now understand diet, exercise, then the doctor select what drug best suits this patient because there are variety of classes of drug that we use in managing diabetes. Okay, I'm sure our viewers are, are getting more informed concerning the management of diabetes now. But let's, let me ask you this question before I will let you go. Because many people ask this question, and um, I, I, I always wonder about it too. Is there any cure for diabetes? And if there is a cure, can you let us in on it? And if there is no cure, why? As of today, there is still no cure for diabetes. And if we go back to what the problem is, it is because the beta cell in those who have type 1 has been totally destroyed. The only means of bringing the beta cell back is by transplanting beta cell. Somebody needs to donate. Okay. In those who have type 2, their beta cell, their function continue to decline irrespective of what we do it still continue to decline it's just that some of the treatment may slow the decline but it still the function still goes down and so that is why today there is no cure but science is working very hard researchers are working hard to try and find a cure for diabetes but we are not there yet finally on health business i want you to advise diabetic patients on what they need to do to stay healthy now people who suffer from diabetes should not see it as a death sentence a lot of fear is created in the mind of sufferers and that is not correct now what they need is to be educated for them to know what diabetes is and how to manage it. Having diabetes does not mean one cannot live up to the age God has designed for that individual. Then our role as relative or friend of those who have diabetes is to encourage them, give them emotional support. Sometimes they are on drug and they are just tired of using the drug. It is not the time to shout on them. It's the time to encourage them so that they can continue. So most people out there should not be afraid. They've had terrible things about diabetes. They should seek knowledge, okay? And when they have this knowledge and they can see that it is not as bad as it is being portrayed. 
Well, it has been so nice having you on Earth Business this morning. Thank you so much for coming. It has been my pleasure. Welcome back. I'm sure you are better informed now on the management of diabetes. Moving on, by popular demand, the 98th Annual Conference of the Pacific Society of Nigeria, held in Humahia, is next. More than 5,000 pharmacists and scientists from Nigeria and diaspora gathered in Humahia, the Abia state capital, for this year's annual national conference, the largest gathering of pharmacy professionals that marks the 90th anniversary of the association. The conference began with a medical outreach to Ubakala Autonomous Community in the state, with seven doctors, 20 nurses, and 40 pharmacists screening for different diseases. There were free consultation and counseling. Free drugs were also given to people. The traditional ruler of the community, who welcomed the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria delegation, commended them for bringing free health care to their doorsteps. The pharmacists then moved to the government house, where they were received by the executive governor, Okeze Ikpiazu. The president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Ahmed Yakasai, urged the governor to strengthen the health care delivery of the state by employing more medical personnel. What I observed since I arrived in Loma here is the hospitality of the people. They have large hearts, I have said it. The whole self-coordinated center is going to be established in four states. Abia State, Kano, Anambra, and Lagos. And most of the states have given certificate of offers. And I understand they have the land here at Abu. Yes. And uh, a new bar of Stukal and Allied Company Limited. And they are awaiting for the release of the certificate of offers. In his response, Governor Ipiazu agreed that there is a lot to do in the health sector, though he noted that the government has worked tremendously in reducing maternal mortality. It is about improving our health in this as a people. And if we want to do something about life expectancy, we must be able to guarantee stable health for our children from 0 to 59 and their mothers. And also look forward to a day when uh, should we lose any child at childbirth? Mr. Governor will be informed about why and how that child died. And then on the other extreme, our uh, aged parents from 70 and above, maybe two weeks to go out there to carry their food. But yes, uh, improving and stabilizing their health also, put it together with the, the making children more stable. You will notice that we can do something about our life expectancy. And that is the ultimate goal of this administration. Then the pharmacists embarked on a sensitization work against hepatitis. <laughs> The essence of this work is to create a sustainable awareness against hepatitis. On Tuesday, October the 7th, the conference was officially opened with the theme Medicines Availability and National Security. Speakers after speakers highlighted the importance of closing down illegal drug stores as well as open drug markets. We want to talk about the manufacturing. We want to talk about the distribution. We want to talk about the way we give it to the final user, the consumer or the patient. We want to talk about rational use of medicine. We want to talk about what steps we need to begin to do to make sure that we make more medicines or medication available to Nigerians in a way that it is more accessible, it is more affordable, and it can be accessed at everywhere, wherever they are living, whether in the rural setting or in the urban setting. Drug and security are the same. Uh, nearly everybody consumes some amount of drug in their life. So improper drug, fake drug can affect our life. 
I think organizations like PSN working with established uh, medical associations like NAPSA, like the Pharmacy Council, like the federal government can do more than they're doing now to bring about good drug delivery, good drug management, and good drug consumption. I'm expecting a great scientific exposition where people will learn more about drugs, learn more about pharmacists, learn what pharmacists do, and then on a personal level and on a state level, I'm expecting an injection of a, a lot of money into the economy of Ibia State. Um, we keep sending the signal. Um, it's a democratic dispensation where liberties are almost open-ended. And um, you must continue to promote rules, the finest standards of rules of engagement. And we continue to do that with all stakeholders in the pharma industry, uh, including operators in the drug markets. I have no doubt that ultimately uh, the spirit of the new national drug distribution guidelines will prevail. It goes a long way when the drugs are always available at the right time, at the right place, and for it to be available for everybody to be able to do. And when it, is, uh, when it is available in a way that the whole environment benefits from it, it will improve the security of even the nation because a lot of people are exposed to the right drugs. And then it means that it has to be available where it should be, where people that are known to be custodian of the drugs that can take authority over the drugs. In his remark, the president of Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Hakmed Yakosai, highlighted the challenges facing the health sector, which include delayed and unlawful appointments in regulatory agencies, poor composition structures in the health sector. If we can give an enabling environment for local production, definitely we will be able to have security as far as medicine is concerned. The availability, the quality, the affordability, the accessibility all come together to bring about the security. If you are just important, somebody somewhere can organize anything, can finish the whole country through that. That's why we are saying, let's do it ourselves, at least 70% of our own consumption should be produced locally. It is believed that this conference will achieve the desired result if the government ensures that all illegal drug markets are shut down and all drugs should be sold based on prescription. <laughs>
fibroids really affect pregnancy. They, they are at a loss that, about that. Yes, sometimes you could have infertility from fibroids, but that rarely happens. It only happens when either the place where the baby is supposed to stay is occupied fully by the fibroids, or the fibroids is where the tube and the uterus join together, which rarely occurs. But yeah, it can happen. And sometimes also, especially the one that I call submucous fibroids, can lead to pregnancy loss. So you can get pregnant and then. But it's not unusual for us to have women getting pregnant with fibroids. And then if the we know that that can be associated with early separation of the placenta, what we call abrupto placenta, and even with good retardation in the babies, and the with preterm delivery, that babies might come early. So how do we make a diagnosis of fibroids? Usually, you know, like I said, they don't many majority of them will not have any symptoms. So sometimes it's when you just go to the doctor for a different thing. And the doctor either does a scan or he does just examines you and says, Man, there is a mass here somewhere. And so but the usual way to make a diagnosis with the scanner or with ultrasound. How do we treat fibroids? Yeah, people always ask that. The surest way to treat fibroids is surgery. But in some cases, especially when either before surgery, you can use drugs, or a woman that is almost nearing a menopause, we can use drugs for them. And there are some injections that we use for this that makes, starves the fibroid of the hormones and therefore makes it to reduce in size. Also, there is a form of IUCD that we can, that is intrauterine contraceptive device that can be used called Marena that can be used for people who have fibroids. Now, like I said, the best way to treat fibroid is still surgery. But now, when people say surgery, they, you're thinking of being cut open. No, in this day and age, it's possible to do what we call pinhole surgery. If you listen to previous episode, you will see me talk about hysteroscopy and laparoscopy. The same way we can use these two things to treat fibroids. If this fibroid is in, inside the endometrium, we can use a stereoscopy. If it's outside, we can use laparoscopy. Of course, the old method of doing abdominal malmectomy, cutting through the uterus, is also a good way to do it. And sometimes, some people ha need to have their uterus or uterus removed. It's at this point we're going to stop this program today. Remember, together, we can conquer infertility. Catch it. draw the curtains on health business this morning. Remember, living healthy is a serious business. Join me again next week for a fresh package. My name is Olu Watoin Kolawale. Bye for now. <laughs>